Welcome everybody, it's Lupac here with another Albion Online tutorial video for you. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most requested things for me to make a video of for a long time. In fact, it's even become a bit of a meme on my stream. When is the video coming? Because it's been, I've tried to make it three times and failed because it's just such a crazy complicated subject. That's right, today we're going to be talking about fame overflow, fame credits and respecking in Albion Online. Now just to pre-warn you, this is going to be quite an in-depth video where we go, where we break apart the systems and we go into a lot of detail. So I hope, I hope that's of interest to you because it is quite an interesting system and making sure that you understand the system and that you do the right things is very, very important because if you do things the wrong way, you can actually make your character very inefficient and create an even longer grind for you than you would have liked for your character. So let's get down to it first. We're going to talk about a few of the terminologies we're going to use through this. Obviously, fame in Albin Online is XP or experience for your character. They call it fame in this game. Uh, if we talk about LP, that means learning points, which you gather 20 a day of and they appear here. Uh, when we talk about fame credits, so fame credits are one of the newer features of the game. They're basically unspent banked fame or experience. You build these up in certain ways that we'll talk about and then you can spend them how you wish. You also gain fame credits when you respec. Uh, and when we're talking about the uh, armor and weapon lines, when we talk about the mastery, we mean the core line. So for example, Court Star Fighter or Cloth Sandals Fighter. When we talk about specialization, we talk about the specific items. So Cleric Sandals Specialization or Double Bladed Staff Specialization. So the inner line, we sometimes call it, is the mastery. And the outer line is the specific specification. That's all of your terminology out of the way. So firstly, we'll talk about respecking because respecking is probably the simpler side of it. Fame overflow is a little bit more complex and how fame credits work is a little bit more complex. So we'll start with the easy bit. We'll talk, talk about respecking and respecking is simply deleting uh, levels in one item and moving it to another. So it's as simple as clicking on the levels you've got you select how many you want to go. So in this case, we'll go all the way back down to one, the base level. Uh, you have to pay silver to respec and you gain a fame credit. So if we do that, you'll see that we gain some fame credits up here. Now, for example, we've decided we want to take out Scholar's Cow and we want to respec it all into Mage Cow. So we can spend all of our credits here and we can get to around around level 62 in mage cal so it's as simple as that respecking costs you silver specking into something new does not cost silver so that that is as simple as it, it is now you have to know that when you respec you lose 20 percent of the fame so you it's not an infinite system you can't just respec over and over again to different things you do lose 20 percent fame each time so make sure you want to do it um, if you respec something for example this cleric cow was at 100 if you respec a normal line that is at 100 it will give you the amount of fame credits to get to i believe around 80 Five. I've got it actually, I've got it written down here. It actually gets you to 92, sorry. So respecting something from 100 will get something of the same level to 92. Now this is the same for artifacts. Obviously artifacts are three times the amount of fame. So respecting an artifact will give you loads of fame credit. So respecting artifact in this case would give me probably enough fame credits to level all of my other trees to 100. So, but respecking an artifact from 100 into another artifact will give you the amount to go to 100. Now, this is only true when it comes to things in the same tree. So, for example, here I was respecking a headpiece and putting it back into headpieces. So, this leads on 
to the next thing we need to talk about. Before we get into the nitty gritty of auto respec, fame credits and fame overflow, we need to talk about how Albion Online like weights your items because not all items are the same. So let's look as an example here. Let's take some things down to one so we can use them as an example. Right. So you'll notice here, we've got a weapon, Inferno Staff, and we've got a cow at one, right? So one level of Inferno Staff here is 51,796 fame. And for Mage Cow, it's exactly the same. So the fame cost is identical, right? So I have to kill the same number of mobs to level these up. However, the LP cost, if you look, if I wanted to skip 80% of the level, it would cost me two LP on the Mage Cow and it would cost me 8 LP on the Inferno. So we already know that Albion values different items differently. And this becomes much more apparent in the fame credits and fame overflow system. So let's first think about how it weights them and what it weights them as. So the details for you, if we use weapon is, is the highest priority. So weapon costs the most LP to level up per fame and it is prioritized the highest. So if we use weapon as the baseline and call that, you know, could call that our control item, that's our baseline, then leveling a chess piece in terms of value is half as much. So 50% of the cost to level a weapon in the robes. Head and chest piece is a quarter, and off hands, as we'll talk about later, they're handled very differently in terms of LP and fame credits. So you can see that if it costs eight, le eight for level one of Inferno Staff, it would cost then half of that, aka four LP for Mage Robe. And then if we wanted to do the head piece, it costs a quarter, which is two. Now, Offhands have to be handled differently in the fame credit system, and I'll explain why very shortly. So we know that weapon is is the is the most expensive to level in terms of priority. Chest is half, boots and helms are a quarter of that. Now the fame credit system is designed similar in that the cost to level certain items will be different. So for example, to level to 100 in Mage Cow costs 3.6 million fame credits, which we can do there. Inferno Staff, however, costs 14 million. So it follows the same weighting system. So it's a lot easier with fame credits and LP to level like headpieces and boots than it is to do weapons. Weapons are the most expensive, artifact weapons even more so. So just so you know, we'll, we'll just find out here. Going from zero to 100 in artifact will cost you 88 million fame or 44 million fame credits. So artifact weapons are the most expensive one to do. Right, so let's talk about earning fame credits. We've already talked about earning them via respecking. Just remove something that you don't wanna level, get the fame credits, level up something you do want to level. That's very, very simple, but that's not the only way to earn fame credits. Now, one of the problems they had with Albion initially was that people were getting annoyed that their, you know, their main leveling build or their, their favorite PVE build, once they got it to max level, they essentially had to stop using it because otherwise they were wasting fame and people want to be more efficient. So they would start leveling something different, even though it was less efficient for fame farming. Now, that that's a pretty, what's what's the word unintuitive system not you should want and you should be rewarded for using the best things for the job you're doing in that case fame farming and leveling so what they created was the fame overflow system now fame overflow what it does is when you reach max level in anything whether it's mastery or specialization when you reach max level it will actually transfer some of the fame you would have earned. At base, I believe it gives you 20% of the fame you would have earned in the form of fame credits. Now again, this follows a weighting system that I'm gonna break down for you in a minute. Uh, 
So 20% of the fame has fame credits, but if you put on auto respec, it will give you 80% of the fame you earn in the form of fame credits. Now, what's the catch? Auto respec will automatically drain your silver to pay for the additional fame credits. Now, there are a lot of questions as to, well, is it better for me to, like rather than gain 20% credits per fame for 100, I should just respec down to 99 and then grind it back up again and keep earning fame credits that way. So the auto respec button was created to basically balance that. What it does is exactly the same as doing this. So leveling it to 99, bringing it back up to 100, respec, respec, repeat. Auto respec basically does the exact same job, costs the same amount of silver, but it has two advantages. One, you always stay at level 100, so you're slightly more powerful than you are at level 99. Not a big deal, but definitely worth noting. And two, it means that you don't have to go through the monotony of checking which things have reached 100 and respecking over and over again. It automatically gives you the credits. Now, I recommend that everybody has auto respec on all the time. There's not really a reason you'd ever want to turn it off. If you don't have the silver for it, then you're, you're definitely doing something wrong when you're hitting level 100 and you don't have silver for auto respec. So keep it on all the time. We've talked about the base value then. We've talked about how the game weights the items, but what does this mean in terms of fame credits? So fame credits are actually slightly better than fame itself. So when you spend them, you'll notice different things have different fame credit costs depending on the weighting we talked about. Let's talk about the values of an individual credit then. So in terms of weapons, one credit is worth two fame. So for every one credit you spend, you get two fame. So you can see here, instead of spending 155K fame or earning 155, we could pay 77. In terms of chess pieces, it does follow the same system as we talked about earlier. One credit is worth four fame. So instead of 51,000, we spend 12. Uh, boots and helms are the same. One credit is worth eight fame. So to earn 100K fame, we only need to spend 12K, which is great value for power leveling those. And finally, we'll talk about offhands. So fame credits are earned the same way they're spent. You do get a 20% reduction, the same as respecking when you do it. But for example, you earn things twice. So for example, if you've got your weapon mastery at 100 and your specialization at 100, every fame you earn from a monster is effectively two fame. One for the main line, one for the specialization. Uh, so every, every point of every, sorry, two points of fame you earn for your weapon gives you one credit or 0.8 credits, sorry, because it's 20% reduction. Every four fame you earn on your chest piece gives you 0.8 of a credit. Uh, every eight fame you earn gives you 0.8 on your boots and helm. But for offhands, it's 40 fame. And the reason is this, because you're earning credits on your offhand, if offhands had a reasonably normal value, like eight or 16 per credit, then that would automatically mean that you should always level with an offhand. You should never use a two-hand weapon because you get so much better value for getting extra fame credits from offhand mainline and the offhand itself. So they actually gave it a ridiculous ratio. In this case, it's 40 to one. So for example, taking, taking an offhand from one to 100 in the main line costs you only 367,000 fame credits. I mean, you could earn that in an hour in high level farming situations. Um, it's, it's absolutely insane, but it has to be like that. Obviously there's still an LP and fame value that's consistent with the other systems, but because of the way that fame overflow works, you can't, you know, they have to have a stupid value because otherwise it would automatically make offhands crazy good. And so for some comparison, you still will actually gain fame credits quicker with a maxed out offhand and one hand weapon, but it's, it's a very small increase. So for every, for every 400 fame you get, you'll gain, I think, 10 extra credits on top of the, the, the many that you would have earned. 
Like, so you would earn, let's have a look. If you have 400 fame with the offhand, you get 10 credits from your offhand, but you'd already be gaining hundreds and hundreds of credits from the rest of your stuff. It's such a small increase. It is an increase, but it's so small. It's not anything major to worry about. Now, when it comes to faming then, you've got a few options. Because of the 20% deduction in fame to fame credit conversion, it's always better to actually be leveling something. So it, it is gonna be slightly more efficient fame wise to level a new thing rather than fame overflow and like something you've already got at 100. But the question you need to ask yourself is, is the is the new build more efficient or is the, the maxed out build 20% more efficient for fame farming? For example, if you've got Blazing Star for 100 artifact, then you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar that you're you're gonna be like much more efficient with the artifact fire than you are with anything else. It's it's like it's such a great feigning weapon that if I was then gonna go and fame one hand, it's gonna be better for me to use the artifact fire and then pour the fame credits into one hand as I get them. I mean it will only take me 14 million to get there. If everything is slotted to max, then you're actually gonna earn credits very, very quickly. So that's the next thing we'll talk about. When when people talk about fame overflow and fame farming, we talk about being like how many so I would say I'm going like I'm going seven slot fame farming to just fame one item. And what that means is all of my slots that I'm using are full except for one. So I'm generating lots of fame credits and I'm pumping them all into one thing. So for example, if I'm using a fire staff, a cloth cowl, cloth chest and leather boots, you can see I've got all of those at 100. So those are all one slot. So one, two, three, four slots. The other four slots, of course, come from the specialization. So here, let's say I'm using a cleric robe. I'm using an artifact fire. I don't even know if I've got any boots at 100, actually. And then let's say I'm going to use assassin boots. So we'll just quickly pop them up to 100. So everything I'm using is pretty much at 100, except my chest piece. So I'm gonna wear whatever chess piece I want to level because I've got none of them at 100. I'll just, I'll wear the one I wanna level. So for example, Artifact. And then I'm gaining fame as normal towards Artifact. I'm using LP on it as normal, but I'm also gaining fame credits from all my other lines. And what this does is it allows me to power level Artifact Robe. So I don't know if I can actually do that right now. So I've got a Blazing. Uh, I'm gonna put some Assassin shoes on real quick and a cleric cow. If I hope I've got some, that could be really annoying if I haven't got some handy. There we go, some assassin shoes and a cleric cow. So everything I've got is maxed, except for the chest piece. And here, we're not gonna go faming, we're just gonna eat a load of tomes, uh, and you'll see what we could do. So we're gonna, we're gonna start leveling. We will turn on auto learn with the LP as well, because that'll obviously speed things up. So say we're like this is the equivalent. We would be in a dungeon faming technically right now. So these are all the mobs dying. We're faming up. And we've, we've done a nice fame session. You know, we're using our LP. We're using our LP. What should we say? Well, we'll do what, 500k, a couple hours faming for average group, something like that. There's going to be a lot of pop-ups here. So that this will show us basically what we would have got under the old system just faming and LPing our artifact chest. And I'm sure it's not, it's not terrible. Right. So there we go, we'll finish this stack of 10 and we'll say that our fame farm finished. So faming as normal and using LP, you'll see we got to 16 in our artifact. But because we were seven slotted, we actually earned 6.1 million fame credits in the meantime. I think, or maybe I had some left over. I don't know how many fame credits I have, but I would have earned some fame credits in the meantime, which actually lets me bump my level to 35. So instead of being at 17, we're actually at 35. So you can see we've made maybe double the progress, but don't forget that artifacts ramp up very, very quickly and we're using LP. So 
that's some pretty quick progress through artifacts. 36 in a couple of hours. We've still got 500 LP to help push it and we can, uh, oh, hang on. I just, oh, I just got a load more fame credits come in. Okay, my bad. There is a slight delay before fame credits are added to your account. In fact, we got to 63 artifact, which is, which is crazy good, isn't it? I do think I actually had some left over from respecking my boots. But the, the point remains the same. If you're looking to actively, once you get a maxed out character or character with things at 100, you can effectively power level one item so, so fast. I mean, if you go back to the way the values work, so weapon, two fame is one credit, chest, four fame is one credit, Boots and Helm, 8 fame is 1 credit. Offhand, 40 fame is 1 credit. You can work out what credits you'll be making per hour when you know your fame per hour. And you can work out really how quick you can level stuff. Which is so good for Albion because as you'll know from my meta snapshot videos, you'll know it from, um, you know, the balance changes, the patch changes that often come in. Sometimes you've got a good build, but, you know, one armor piece goes out of meta and a new armor piece becomes meta. The two things that we talk about in this video, respec, fame credits, those things combine to make it super easy now to change from one thing to another. If you're changing your whole build, you're probably gonna need to respec and then grind that last little bit. But if you only need to change one item on your build, suddenly life became so, so easy to make a minor meta change. So some notes for you guys as well. Artifacts always cost three times the amount of fame and LP of a normal item. Specializations, the outer line, always cost double the amount of fame or fame credits to level up. However, the LP cost is the same. So we've always said about LP, never use LP on the inner line, only ever use LP on the outer line and prioritize artifacts. With fame credits, that's not true because you get the same value for fame per fame credit on the outer and the inner. So you can use fame credits to power level your main line. So don't be afraid of doing that. And often like, you know, if you get to 100, then you're gonna be earning fame credits for other stuff even quicker. Obviously, you still wanna be actually leveling as opposed to using overflow if you plan to use that item because it's 20% more efficient, but it's a nice little bonus. Uh, in terms of offhands, they have the same LP cost to level as boots and helms, but actually the fame requirement is half. So I would say don't use LP on, on offhands, but definitely use fame credits because fame credits are giving a bonus or are worth a lot more in terms of offhands. It's, it's super easy. Only ever level fame credits with, uh, only ever level offhands with fame credits rather because it's really efficient and LP is a lot less efficient. So just, just worth noting on that as well. Um, I think that's most of the, the things you need to know. The main benefit, obviously anybody who doesn't have 100 in anything doesn't need to worry about this fame credit and fame overflow details it only kicks in once you reach 100 but what it does mean is obviously you generally reach 100 in your masteries long before your specializations so once you start reaching 100 in masteries you get a really nice boost to your specialization leveling because the fame credits will start pouring in from the outer line and that will help you pump your inner line even quicker they the leveling now in the game is so much quicker than it was in in launch. Launch, the grind was very, very hefty, particularly for the crazy people that wanted to get 400 in a full tree rather than just 100 spec in their main. They've made leveling quicker. Re, you know, you can now respec with meta changes. They basically made the whole system a bit more friendly to meta shifts and reduce the grind a little bit. But making sure you know how to do it efficiently and what you should be spending what on. I hope this video has helped you with that. I hope you don't make any mistakes that some new players do and they regret. I mean, you could always respect, but you don't want to be losing 25% of your fame every time. 
Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video um, about fame credits, fame overflow, and respecking. I hope it shed a bit more light on the subject for you. Uh, I will. Uh, any questions you've got, you can feel free to comment below, and I'll try and answer anything that you need to know about this system. Sorry for such a long rambly video, but it really is quite a complex system because at first glance, it looks like everything costs the same amount of fame. But because of the way they weighted the LP and the fame credits, you actually might not realize that a weapon is considered much more valuable or, you know, four times more valuable than a helm or double the value of a chess piece, that sort of thing. So it's all useful info that will help you understand the game a bit better and help make your leveling process and your, your spending decisions a bit better. Anyway, guys, look forward to more Albion Online content on my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you wouldn't mind. And a big shout out to all of you guys supporting me on Twitch and Patreon and helping keep the channel alive. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.